Hello there and welcome to this episode of Inside Southeastern Basketball with Head Coach Jay Ladner presented by the Hampton Inn of Hammond. I'm Alan Waddell. Thank you so much for joining us as we now welcome to the show the head basketball coach of your Southeastern Lions, Coach Jay Ladner. And Coach, thanks for being here. Uh, a couple of home games this past weekend against some in-state rivals. Uh, came up on the short end of the stick, uh, but two very competitive ball games. Well, very competitive, you know, but we're getting past the point of playing competitively. Our, our players wanting to win, our fan base wants us to win. We had some great crowds in the UC and um, you know, we really needed to win those basketball games, and, and I, we, we, hopefully people know that they've watched the, the show over the last few weeks, you know, that know that we're going to be honest about things, and, and we certainly had pointed to that. So we're disappointed that we had lost. We, we, we know that we were competitive, but we're, we've, we've progressed past that stage, and uh, we we're, we're expect to win. So we're very disappointed that we did not win. Um, we feel like that there were some opportunities in both games. We just have to play more consistently. Coach, I'll ask you this. I know you, uh, in your career, you've been ultimately successful uh, everywhere you've been. Uh, your coaching staff as well. With the win-loss record like it is right now, how do you keep the team positive? There's a lot of basketball still to be played. Well, no doubt. We have to keep things in perspective. And, you know, one thing that we talked to our players about much before the season started was the Southland Conference is a one-bid league. Um, uh, and, and I would like to add in as we're talking about that, I've this is my 25th year as being a head coach. I've never had a team that has had as many injuries as this particular team across the board. And, and in fact, to the point last night, we, we only dressed out six scholarship players. And that's, that's a, a tall task. Now, with that being said, how do you keep them positive? Well, again, we go back to the start of the year after looking at the type of schedule that we had to play. And most teams, there, there's 32 or so leagues in the NCAA. Most of those leagues are one-bid leagues. The Southland Conference is no different. It's a one-bid league. Stephen F. Austin won the Southland Conference last year. They're leading it again this year. They made it. They won a, a round, first round game, beat VCU last year. And by the way, I'll say that you know the Southland Conference is a really underrated league. I, I've, I've quickly learned that. Um, but what we do to keep in things in perspective, and hopefully to, our players understand this, is that we're truly playing for that. It really doesn't matter what your win-loss record is. Now, as competitors and, and have guys that have some pride in themselves, we want to win. And uh, that that's, that's kind of helps keep us going, and we need to. Um, but the bottom line is, is that we're preparing and getting better for the conference tournament at the end of the year. That's what we're playing for. So hopefully our players will understand that all of our goals are still out in front of us. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Let's go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we're going to take a look at all the highlights from this past week right here on Inside Southeastern Basketball with Head Coach Jay Ladner, presented by the Hampton Inn of Hammond. With every stay at Hampton, enjoy our free hot breakfast options. You did a great job. It looks good. Then fuel up with up to 9,000 honors bonus points on a long weekend stay. Make every stay more rewarding and feel the Hamptonality. Inside Southeastern Basketball with Jay Ladner is made possible by Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana. For over 30 years, Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana has been a premier landscape architect design company. Angelo specializes in both commercial and residential work. Angelo's offers their clients a buildable and realistic solution with a focus on design, construction, and proper maintenance techniques. Owner Angelo DiStefano, Southeastern Class of 1972, invites you to visit Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana at 13750 Jefferson Highway in Baton Rouge or visit their website at angeloslawnscape.com. Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana, a proud supporter of Southeastern and Southeastern Basketball. Inside Southeastern Basketball is made possible by support from friends of Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center for Housing located in Hammond, Louisiana. Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center is a nonprofit Christian housing ministry serving Tangibaho and Livingston parishes. They strive to help low-income, elderly, and disabled citizens obtain safe, decent, and affordable housing by using volunteers to build and repair. Homeowners pay for the building materials based on terms they can afford. The Fuller Center is supported by three retail stores, which accept donated items from the public. The reused store features construction supplies, appliances, and furniture. The Fuller Shop carries housewares and decorative items for the homes as well as books, videos, and jewelry, while the Rabbit Hole sells gently used clothes, shoes, and fashion accessories. Visit all three stores at 955 South Morrison Boulevard in Hammond or call 985-419-0256 to schedule a pickup. For details on volunteer opportunities, find them on Facebook under Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center 
or visit www.gingerfordnorthshore.org. Welcome back to Inside Southeastern Basketball with Head Coach Jay Ladner, presented by the Hampton Inn of Hammond. The Lions were at home on Saturday night to take on Northwestern State. Here's the first half highlights. A side of the backboard, loose ball picked up. Fillmore's got it, three on one. Fillmore to Upson, Upson slam on the other end. 10-8, Lions assist Fillmore. Near side Fillmore, Fillmore to Jackson. Jackson down low to Upson, Upson uh, turns around, lays it up and in. And Devontae's off and running tonight. That's his ninth point. Pliss is double teamed to Greaves. Greaves is going to take it in the middle of the paint. Left-handed layup on the way. That one no good. Got his own rebound. Put back that one good. Greaves the miss. The rebound, the stick back. 20 to 18. Quickly down the floor. Thompson trying to get in on Duplissis and the layup good. They waste no time. Fillmore angles left, gets a screen by Ochi, bringing around, middle of the paint, going to stop, pull up, 15-footer, that one good. He's two out of two from the field, and boy, couldn't be happier for anybody. Maggio, middle of the paint, a little teardrop jumper on the way, that one good, Maggio got the kind roll. He's got three, we're tied 24-24, West, no good, and a rebound to Maggio, down the floor to Jackson. Zay, across to Jenkins, right on the floor, finger rolls it up and in. 26-24, Cedric with his second bucket. And the Lions have a two-point lead. 7.40 to go here first half. Greaves now is going to put it on the floor, take it strong. Now is going to spin. Wide open, fadeaway jumper. Good. Big bucket by Greaves, 33-30. Demons by three. 3.45 to go. It's back to Jackson. Zay sets up for three. Good. Jackson with a three ball. His first of the night. Six seconds. West gets a screen. Pull up jumper on the way. Hit it. Three ball. Two seconds, three seconds, duplicis. Well, Coach, you're down at halftime in this ball game. This was a very close game, and then right in the last few minutes before the half, they stretch it out to a 12-point to a lead before the halftime. Yeah, a very disappointing way to end the half. We talk about the important 20 minutes of the ball game, first five and last five of each half, and we just didn't finish the half. We played, I thought, had played very well up to that point. Um, now, give Northwestern credit. They have uh, they're one of the top scoring teams, third top scoring team in Division One and they have the top scorer and the th number three ranked scorer in Division One as well. Both of those guys hit huge baskets down the last minute. Uh, three point one, it was a, and one, a three point play by Zeke Woodley, and then they hit a, a three right there at the buzzer by Jalen West. So, you know, it was very uh, a, a tough way for us to end the half. I thought our guys though up to that point had played well, and then they responded again in the second half and caught, cut the lead down to three. We really had momentum, had an opportunity, but we were just a play or two away from overtaking them. All right, let's go back out and check out the second half highlights. Jackson, middle of the paint, wide open, laid up and in. Nice move by Jackson. Say, near side to Fillmore in the corner, Duplicis. Got it to Ochi. Ochi powers it up. That one's shot off the mark. No good. Ochi got his own rebound. Stick back that one good. Ochi laid it up and in. Put a shot clock at eight. Joshua through the leg dribble to Upson. Upson, 10 foot jumper on the way. Good. Devontae with his 11th point, 59-46, the second hand. Fillmore, little head fake, shoots one, that one's off the mark, no good, Ups in there with the foul. Fillmore drew contact and didn't get the call, but Ups in the bucket. Coach, tough second half in this one, uh, you narrowed the gap, uh, you had an opportunity there where you had seven stops in a row and just really couldn't whittle it down any further than that, but team played hard and they just made some plays at the end of the game. Well, you know, again, it, it probably sounds like a broken record, but I, I thought our, our never did quit. They, we gave ourselves an opportunity on the defensive end, actually played very well, I, th I thought, on the defensive end, uh, rebounded the basketball well. Uh, we had, as you mentioned, seven consecutive stops at one point where we were really had the momentum. We had a great crowd. They were itching yeah. really to get into that game. Uh, but during that, after evaluating the film, during that seven stop stretch, seven consecutive stops, we only were able to convert three points. Tough, we missed a couple of free, key free throws, some, some nice looks on offense, uh, turned the ball over once or twice there. So, you know, we, we get, we're getting it done on one end, we got to get it done on the other. That's a sad to say, you know, you don't get to change your offenses and defenses like in football, but we have to, we've got to convert. And we've got good offensive players, we're just, we're, our, our, our confidence level, I think, is down a little bit. We need some good things to happen to these guys. They're working hard, and eventually, if they'll just stick the course, it'll happen. All right, let's go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we'll take a look at the highlights as the Lions 
came back on a short, just a couple of days on Monday night and took on McNeese State at the University Center right here on Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner presented by the Hampton Inn of Hammond. With every stay at Hampton, enjoy our free hot breakfast options. You did a great job. It looks good. Then fuel up with up to 9,000 honors bonus points on a long weekend stay. Make every stay more rewarding and feel the Hamptonality. Inside Southeastern Basketball is made possible by support from friends of Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center for Housing located in Hammond, Louisiana. Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center is a nonprofit Christian housing ministry serving Tangibaho and Livingston parishes. They strive to help low-income, elderly, and disabled citizens obtain safe, decent, and affordable housing by using volunteers to build and repair. Homeowners pay for the building materials based on terms they can afford. The Fuller Center is supported by three retail stores which accept donated items from the public. The reused store features construction supplies, appliances, and furniture. The Fuller Shop carries housewares and decorative items for the homes as well as books, videos, and jewelry, while the Rabbit Hole sells gently used clothes, shoes, and fashion accessories. Visit all three stores at 955 South Morrison Boulevard in Hammond or call 985-419-0256 to schedule a pickup. For details on volunteer opportunities, find them on Facebook under Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center or visit www.gingerfordnorthshore.org. Welcome back to Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner, presented by the Hampton Inn of Hammond. On Monday night, it was Jam the Jungle Night at the UC as the Lions took on McNeese State. Here's the first half highlights. <laughs> right side. Hardy near side Burr. Burr's going to drive into the corner. Garrett for three good. And Garrett has the first buckets of the night. That is his 35th tray of the year. 117 for the team. The floor dribble on the right side. Down low to Upson. Devontae going to spin. Had it knocked away. Jenkins picks it up. He'll lay it up and in. Right place, right time. We're tied 3-3. Jenkins has all of the lion points here. Four minutes gone by, first half. Around the perimeter, Hardy's got it. Right wing down in the corner. Three ball on the way here. Rattles around, but it'll stay. And a three ball for Garrett. He's got a couple of threes, and it's 6-3 Cowboys. They left-handed dribble back to Jenkins. Right side down low to Ochi. Ochi lays it up and in. Nice ball movement by the Lions. Ochi's got his first bucket. 6-5 McNeese. Up to Burr, up top. Down in the far corner, Lewis, jumper. Two ball, 16-footer from the corner. The McNeese has hit their last two shots. Greaves in the far corner. Down low to Ochi. Ochi powers it up and in. Good, counted in the foul. Off balance layup, found a way to go in. Ochi trying to polish off a three-point play. 13-8 McNeese. Free throw on the way, that one good. Ochi with a three-point play. Gets them back to within four here. That's a good thing. Duplis is down to Barclay. Up top, Jackson. Zay sits up, shoots a three. Off the glass, banks open. <laughs> Jackson up high to get to rebound. Zay, coast to coast, free throw line. Going to take it off the glass. That one's no good. Rebound ups and powers it back up and in. Devontae's got a bucket. That is his first bucket of the night, 18-14. Lions on the 5-0 run. Daniel, middle of the floor, finds Zay. Jackson, a little weaving his way through traffic. Going to take it, lay it up. Good, counted in the foul. 18-16, Lions have scored seven straight. Zay's at the line to try to polish out the three-point play. Foul is on Hardy. Daniel in the middle of the floor, top of the key. Back to the near side, Jackson down in the corner. Duplissis, Duplissis is going to drive. Take it, wrap around pass. Upson slam dunk. And we're tied, 18-18. Nice ball movement by the Lions. They've scored nine in a row. There, No good. And the rebound to Upson, who finds Jenkins. Devontae hustled down, just took it away. Now Devontae takes the pass from Jenkins. Left-handed layup. He finger rolls it up and in. It's off the mark, no good. A rebound to Jenkins. Cedric across the way, back to Duplissis. Duplissis near side, Jackson. Jackson on the right wing, in the middle of Jenkins. Jenkins lays it up and in, nice give and go. And the Lions lead, 22-21. Cowboys looking to get it in. Duplissis with the block on the shot of Agachi. Jenkins now the pass from Jackson, lays it up and in, count it and the foul. Got a chance to make it a one-point ball game. Cedric, one out of two from the line so far. Free throw coming here, good. 
26-25. The Lions four out of seven from the free throw line here. Went up high, got the rebound. Duplis is going to drive middle of the paint. Give it to Ochi. Ochi with a head fake. Going to turn, lay it up. Good, got it. And the foul. 3.18 to go. Ochi's free throw on the way. Good. Five out of eight. 2.30 left. Jackson to Jenkins. Jenkins going to drive baseline. Take it. Lay it up. And that one good. High arching shot off the glass. Cedric got it to fall. 30 to 29 with 2.20 to go first half. Dean Cowboys by one. 32-31. Bears sets up. Shoots a three. No good. Rebound right to Jenkins. Down the floor to Ochi. Ochi's going to take it. Slam it home. 33-32 with a minute 10 to go. 10-8. Jackson to Duplissis. Duplissis lost the handle, got it back, shot off the glass. How we good? Duplissis got it to fall. Two. Greaves to steal at the buzzer. Jenkins for three. Can't get it to go. A thin bench that's even thinner with Fillmore not available tonight, and they lead 35-34 at the half. Coach, this is a one-point game at halftime. You're on top against McNeese State. Uh, one thing we didn't have a chance to mention, but got some bad news before this game as Josh Fillmore uh, was ruled out of this ball game with a knee injury. A very, you know, difficult uh, <laughs> uh, process there. I mean, we were retooled. We got the news late that morning, uh, yesterday morning, uh, which was Monday morning, morning of the game. and. Um, so it was very. We we're already we we're already shorthanded. We have a lot of guys that are playing hurt. Has has been very well documented. Uh, we had another starter go down. We don't know the extent of his injury yet. Hopefully, we'll know later in the week. Uh, you know, Drew Guillory, who had started the first 18 games for us at the three position, he's he's been out now for the year for the last couple of weeks, and then Josh goes down. In my 25 years of coaching, I'm certain I'm not living right. Allen and uh, we've had more injuries than I've ever had on a basketball team, but there's got to be some silver line at the end of the tunnel. We just got to keep the faith. Coach, I got to ask you this. This is one thing we haven't seen your team do a whole lot of this year is uh, I know because of a lot of the injuries and being shorthanded, you came out playing zone in the first half and in the second half against McNeese. Not our nature, uh, not my nature that we would want to play like that. Uh, I, we like to go force the action and and, and bring, bring pressure to people, but it was really our only choice. Um, and I thought our guys did a good job of it for the most part for not having that not being our base defense. They understood why um, because of our injury situation and our lack of depth uh, that we had to go do that. And we did mix a little bit of man-to-man -man in there and the guys did a good job. You know, I was looking at, our, at the stats for the, uh, the conference and, and we're leading the league in opponent field goal percentage which is a direct relation to your defense. So our defense has actually has done a very good job. We've really improved that. We want to continue to do a good job there, but we've got to get more consistent on offense. All right, let's go back out and check out the second half highlights against McNeese State. Wrap around pass to Cedric, back to Jackson. Zay for three on the way, good. We're tied, 38-38. Two out of seven from downtown tonight. The Lions, Jackson's got both of them. Gidry, baseline drive now. Back to Gidry on the pass. Gidry's jumper good. Three ball up top. Jackson, Zay's now going to drive. Back to Jenkins. Cedric sets up for three on the way. That one good. Cedric's first three ball of the night. Boy, it'd be great if he got hot. They'll skip it across. Three ball on the way from Garrett. Off to Mark, no good. Ochi out of there to Jenkins. Down the floor to Greaves. Greaves going to take it, slam it home. 46-43. Cedric Jenkins everywhere tonight. And for McNeese, 49-43. Jackson kicks it out to Jenkins. Jenkins now will dribble back around up top. Under 14 to go. Jackson down low to Ochi. Ochi off the glass. That one good. Good pass by Jackson. Ochi the bucket. Picks it back. Burr is going to take it, middle of the paint, lay it up, left-handed, right down the middle of the paint, up and in. Of the second half, we're exactly halfway through the second half. Hardy with a 15-foot jumper good. Kick it back to Duplissis, to Jenkins up top. Cedric in the middle there, Zochi lays it up and in, Cannon in the foul. Five, and the free throw on the way, good. Ochi's got 17. Has it, Garrett, long three coming here, good. That is their 11-3 of the night, 56-50. Jenkins gonna drive free throw line, try to dump it down low to Ochi. And another turnover against the Lions. Burr quickly back the other way, layup blocked by Upson, and then a slam follow through by Lewis, and it's 60-50. Cowboys in the zone. Jackson, free throw line, dumps it down low to Upson. Devontae off the glass, good. 61-52. 
can even begin to stress how big that bucket is. On the left wing, still got time tonight. Just got to get a stop. Jenkins reaches in there, gets a steal. Cedric's going to take it in and lay it up. Uh, he's everywhere tonight, playing hurt. Left, Jenkins chasing him down. They'll bump it in the middle to Gidry. Gidry off the glass, and that one good, 63-54. Jenkins in the middle of Greaves. Greaves in the paint, going to take it, lay it up and in. 65-56. Well, Coach, this one uh, at the end of the ball game, they stretched it out there a little bit. Uh, just couldn't get it done there on Monday night. You know, another game, you know, we lead it to half. Uh, uh, and, and go into the second half, we get a little uh, slow start. But as always, there they come back again. They come roaring back every time, you know, and, and they, they never have any quit in them. They get knocked down. They, they stand back up. Uh, and and I, I do believe that good things are on the way for them. But, you know, you got to give McNeese credit. They hit a – as, as we would narrow that thing to two or three points, they, they hit a, a couple of different uh, big shots for them that were well contested and give them credit for making big shots to break our runs. But a uh, hard fought game, um, anxious to maybe give McNeese another shot when we, if, if we're a little more healthy. No doubt about it, as the Lions still have a lot of basketball here to play. And, Coach, I will say this, just from talking to all the fans at the game, before the game, at halftime, at the end, still everyone very positive behind your club. And I know uh, that, that great things are still coming for your club here in 2015. Well, we, we think everything's still in front of us. Uh, our, our players have a lot of pride about themselves, and I'd like to credit Cedric Jenkins and Anochi and Ochi and Devontae Upson, our, our three seniors on the team, for holding the team together. You know, a lot of teams at this point of the year uh, with the one loss record maybe where it is uh, would have a tendency to throw the towel in. I, I haven't sensed that with this team. So uh, I'm real proud of that. And a lot of the guys are playing through some injuries, you know, and, and we've got guys, uh, Cedric's a great example who you'll have a chance to visit with in the next segment. Yeah, we're going to take a break. When we come back, Cedric Jenkins will join us on set right here on Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner presented by the Hampton Inn of Hammond. With every stay at Hampton, enjoy our free hot breakfast options. You did a great job. It looks good. Then fuel up with up to 9,000 honors bonus points on a long weekend stay. Make every stay more rewarding and feel the Hamptonality. Welcome back to the final segment here of Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner, presented by the Hampton Inn of Hammond. I'm Alan Waddell, and joined now uh, by senior lion Cedric Jenkins. And Cedric, thanks for stopping by and spending some time with us here. Cedric, this is your first year here at Southeastern, transferred in, a graduate student from Southern Miss. Talk about your time here at Southeastern. Um, it's been it's been beautiful. Um, I mean, a little bit closer to home. Um, get to see my family a lot more. Um, Guys that are around me are great people, great character guys. Um, the support we get is amazing from the fans, and I'm just excited to be here. Well, Cedric, I know uh, the win-loss record isn't where you, the, the teammate, your teammates want it to be right now, but still a lot of basketball to be played. All of your goals still ahead of you. Yes, sir. It's, it's most definitely that point in the season where everybody's fighting for the, their postseason livelihood. And every game is important. I mean, it's unfortunate that the season is going the way it is, but we have a lot of guys that, that have pride in themselves and, and will always be ready for the next challenge. And nobody's going to lay down. Everybody's going to play hard and compete. That's what Division One basketball is all about. No doubt about it. And I know that uh, it's interesting being able to talk to you because you have a different perspective as well. You played in a different league, and now you play this year in the Southland Conference. Talk about playing in the Southland Conference. What, what does this league bring to the table? Um, it's, it's definitely underrated, like Coach said. And um, there's a lot of great players in the league as compared to that of a Conference USA. Um, a lot of these teams could play in Conference USA. It's just um, different situations. And each night, teams are so versatile that you may have a, a guy, a typical guy that would play uh, guard in Conference USA playing the four spot, <laughs> uh, power forward, and you have to make the proper adjustments every night to, to, to um, overcome certain things. Well, let me, let me ask you about this coaching staff because this is Coach Ladner, uh, Coach Golf, Coach Roan, Coach Waterman, their first year here at, uh, at Southeastern. Talk about this coaching staff. and uh, I, I know you, you had to f feel pretty strongly about it and to come over here and, and spend this, this year with Southeastern. Yes, sir. It's, it's unique because I, I have a certain history with each one of the coaches. Um, Coach Rowan being a Mississippi guy um, and following me at Southern Miss. And Coach Golf, I mean, I've known him since since eighth grade. So <laughs> it was really that, that part of it I knew was going to be great coaches. And as far as preparation, I mean, you wouldn't want to go to any play for anybody else. You always prepare. You always know what to expect each and every game. Well, Cedric, I know as a senior, uh, 
it all, it always comes to an end. And, and you know, the, the season's now kind of winding down. Just, I mean, still a lot of basketball to be played, but we're still at the back end of the season. I know that you're going to play as hard as you can because yeah. your senior year, this is it for you. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I'm just, I mean, I'm just taking, you, when you're a senior, you take more, you're more pride in everything that you do a little bit more. And I'm just not taking anything for granted. And like you said, just trying to play hard as I can and trying to teach the younger guys that they're going to reach this point too also and how to prepare to get better each year. Well, I know our fans have really enjoyed watching you play. Uh, haven't been here that long, but here for your senior season at Southeastern. As uh, Let's do this real quick. Before we go, we're going to check in with Coach Jay Ladner. He's going to give us the upcoming scouting report for the Lion opponents. Certainly very excited about, you know, getting back. One thing when you, when you have a, we say, a little nasty taste in our mouth from losing, uh, you know, it's good in basketball. Uh, you don't have to wait a whole week kind of like you do in football. We get an opportunity to get on back out there. We've got a long road trip in front of us, but we're excited about going to Abilene Christian. Abilene Christian is a much improved team. They're having a, a much better year than folks a, a, a have expected or uh, experts around the league and maybe some of the league coaches. They're, they're off to a very good start and have had some impressive wins. So uh, one thing about them, they do a great job of shooting the three-point shot. Uh, it is going to be a game, I think, that our, our, our smaller post players that we, have, we possess are going to have an opportunity to match up a little bit better. But they're a very well-coached team, a solid defensive man-to-man -man oriented team, uh, and we're going to have our hands full uh, to go win on the road. But you know, what, the challenge that we're going to post our players over the next couple of days is an opportunity to, to, to go win a game on the road. And that's something that's eluded us so far. So we, we're excited about that opportunity. We'll come back, uh, we'll play Central Arkansas at the UC on Tuesday night, which is a little bit odd uh, scheduling quirk there in the league. Um, because of the long uh, trip home, they've, they, they've allowed us to play that game on Tuesday. Um, so we need everybody in the UC. And by the way, I want to thank all the Lion Legion, Lion Nation out there for their great support. The crowds have been outstanding and enthusiastic, and uh, we thank you for that support. And please note that it, goes, uh, it, it does not go unnoticed. Line up. Well, there you have it. So the Lions will be back in action at home on Tuesday night. A little bit different uh, there for the schedule. And Cedric, I'll ask you before we say goodbye, uh, I know these last couple of games have had some really nice crowds at home. And I know that, that you guys really feed off of that. Yes, sir. The energy from the crowd definitely plays a huge factor for us, especially when we get that big dunk and hit them chair. I mean, you, you're always ready for the next play, especially uh, guarding and trying to get a, a crucial stop in the game. Cedric Jenkins, senior Lion basketball player here at Southeastern Louisiana University. That's going to do it for us. Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next week right here on Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner, presented by the Hampton Inn of Hammond.